Okay, so the roach enclosures like desperately need cleaned and it took me a while actually to try to figure out how in the world I was going to do this because there is a major problem with just cleaning out the roach enclosures. And that's that there's a ton of baby roaches and there's also a ton of the waste matter in these enclosures and the the young roaches hide in it and i'm not about to sort through all of it just because there has to be hundreds and hundreds of babies and that while the the fecal matter doesn't bother me it's mainly just the fact that that would be a ton of work and it would take so many hours to do and on top of the babies there's also a ton like hundreds and hundreds of lesser mealworms or the buffalo beetles which are essentially just a much smaller version of the common mealworm that we use as feeder insects so i will very commonly use them as feeder insects but what they actually do is they take the dead roaches and then they eat them so then there's no dead roaches left in the enclosure so if the, the roaches randomly die that's what happens with them so with the red runner roaches i actually kind of already cleaned them out and you can see all of them up here i didn't clean out the substrate because the amount of fecal matter wasn't real bad and it's really dry in there which is kind of good and you can see the beetles there going around and there's just tons of roaches there and they do really well i think it's because they're right over the heat source so they stay really warm probably and that kind of keeps it really dry in there somehow even though the dubia roaches dubia roach enclosures don't get i mean they get pretty humid somehow but overall it's fine and then i've realized that it's actually really easy to get them off the the egg crate it's way harder to get dubia roaches off the egg crate for some reason so these guys, you just hit it a couple times and they're all off, even the tiny, tiny, tiny babies. And I already replaced all of their egg crate. So that's pretty good. But here is what I have come up with. There's this enclosure. And this, I, I started a smaller con colony of DB roaches just for a little while. And I put them in here. And let's see, I don't know if any of them have survived because I haven't been putting wet food in here. But you can see a buffalo beetle right there. So the lesser mealworms are still in here, but it doesn't look like any of the roaches have survived. And here is my solution. I'll get out all the adults. I'll make sure all of the adults are in a separate container, and then I will basically get all of the large roaches that you can see and easily pick up out of the, the fecal matter, and then I will simply dump all that's left into this container. I will feed it and do normal things with it and deal with it later. <laughs> so essentially what's going to happen is there's going to be no adults in this enclosure, only little tiny babies. They'll eventually grow up as I'm feeding it and whatnot, and then I can get them out. What I'm going to do with the, the buffalo beetles, I have no idea. But I'm assuming whatever I get off, whatever I end up, like I'll make sure to be able to repopulate the buffalo beetles in the more clean and sanitary enclosures, which are still going to be these. I just need to get everything out of them to wash them because it's like pretty gross in there. And then I'm not sure what exactly I'm going to do with all of them, but if they all are in here, then I can try to feed them off because at least one of my turtles, and this is the little tiny turtle, wherever it is. Normally it's right out in front or basking. It's right there. It loves those. It really enjoys them. So if I can use this like specifically for that or the baby crested geckos, if they end up starting to take them, I'm not entirely sure. But if I can get them to try to go after them, that would be pretty good. So that's essentially what I'm going to do. Someday maybe I'll just throw this into the iguana's cage and then the, the, the fecal matter will essentially be good for like the soil and everything and future plant growth. The problem is I don't have any plants in the iguana's cage. So I would use it in some of the other terrariums. Like maybe I, I'll put it in Richard's tank 
when I redo his. Actually, I very well might do that because I don't think that the lesser mealworms could harm him, but I don't want to put it in the crust gecko enclosures because the crust geckos lay eggs in their enclosures and I don't want another thing eating them other than the isopods. And, and in this tank, they definitely would in that tank. The isopods are all in all right level, so they don't eat the eggs. But anyway, I don't want that. I don't want them in my leopard gecko enclosure because leopard gecko is just too small. And these guys legitimately scare me. As the same with isopods is because they're like definite omnivorous. They're definitely omnivorous. So if there is a dead roach, they will completely clean it out and they would very well eat an animal. And I don't want them stressing out the animal by, you know, being around them. Obviously, my animal's not just going to die off and they don't kill the, the roaches. But again, it just worries me in general because they are there and they, it's just one more thing to bug the actual animal. So I wouldn't worry about the iguana. I wouldn't worry about the bearded dragon and it would just add more bioactive life going on. And I think that would be pretty cool. So I'll probably do that in the bearded dragon enclosure. But for now, and then the roaches wouldn't be too much of a problem. The roaches are actually, can also be a cleanup crew. The problem with adding roaches into your enclosure is they'll probably get out. Now, if an isopod gets out and it's on the floor, nobody cares, it's just an isopod. But if a roach gets out, which is essentially the same thing, because if a roach gets out, it's eventually going to die, just as an isopod would. They're both from tropical environments. Uh, people freak out because it's a roach, you know? So roaches just have like a very negative... People really don't like them in the United States, or at least in Mer or in uh, Ohio. So we can't, we can't have roaches getting out. That would be very bad. So we don't want that. But... For now, I'm gonna do this. This way I'm not killing off masses amounts of lesser mealworms and I can't just throw it away because then I could like introduce them to different things and I don't wanna just kill them all. So hopefully this will be an adequate way to do this and then we'll see in the future. But I'm gonna start off, I have a tub and I will kind of just start moving the adults into a tub and see how that goes. Probably I'm gonna move some amount of fecal matter in into the tub on accident. So I'm gonna, I, I'm not entirely sure what I'm gonna do because I haven't cleaned out roach enclosures in forever. And that's why I'm running into this problem. And then here, we're also gonna put the stuff on the bottom into there, but I am not going to let any of these roaches, you know, leave. So I'll make sure that I get all of them, all the babies, because these guys are a new colony and they're quite a bit more valuable than the the DB roaches. And these are Madagascar hissing cockroaches. And while they're super easy to breed and they're not necessarily like valuable, they are a lot more important to me just in general because they are adorable. So these are some babies. Let's get you guys going somewhere else. So I always have to check the top Make sure there's not babies on it. Because these guys can climb plastic, which is stressful. But they don't really dirty things as much, honestly. But I would just like to get all the... Their poop's a lot bigger, honestly. So I'd like to get that out too. So I'll clean these guys last. And they're doing really well. There's lots of different sizes of them. And I would like to set them up in a bioactive enclosure at some point. I can honestly do that in this enclosure. And that would be pretty interesting. I might do that in the future, or I might try to set up a terrarium for them. But I'm just going to set them up here for now so they can stay on their heat pad. And then I will start on these. Okay, so one cool thing about having so many roaches is that every once in a while you find something kind of interesting. So this guy has like a tear out of him. See that? So you can see right here, it's just a tear. You can see it's kind of fleshy there and on the other side. So here's the thing. With these guys, it's very possible that I picked him up and tore that off at some point. Or maybe he was born like that. Or maybe something else happened. I'm not entirely sure. Sorry for the... It keeps not focusing. There we go. So... 
I'm not sure. So when I go in with the tongs, I'll sometimes grab them and then squish them a little bit and then put them back because like my animals have them eat them or something and I'll just throw them back into the enclosure. So every once in a while I find one that's like deformed and I'm pretty sure that sometimes when I grab small ones and like squish them a little bit, I kind of break their structure and then they heal and then they are deformed, which is pretty interesting. So I, that might've been what happened with this guy. I'm not sure, but it's pretty interesting to see something like this. To see something like this. Okay, so as I explained, I really need to clean these tubs. These are like 52 ounce uh, under bed storage tubs that I put on top of my iguana cage. And they have all this like, I don't know, the terrestrial equivalent of like mom on the bottom of the tank. And it's just a ton of like shell from the those like uh, feces or waste and dust and stuff like that, or not dust, but like just bits of stuff. They need to clean be cleaned out, and then also I'm replacing the egg crate with other egg crate, and I just used use I just use used egg crate, unlike some people who buy something, but this works perfectly well. And then at this point, they are new clean. They are very clean with new bedding and straw and everything, and they should be doing well, which is very good. So that was the whole idea going on here. I just wanted to make sure they were all cleaned up just to make them look more appealing and also to provide a better environment for my insects. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, feel free to like it down below. If you have any comments or concerns, comments below. And if you're more content, then subscribe.